Hi, so in this particular video, we're going to be looking at scale drawings and maps. It's aimed at roughly about grade three GCSE maths, usually about um, two to four marks per question. Uh, well worthwhile having a go at. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. Need any help? Always add a comment, always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so this particular worksheet is aimed at uh, roughly about grade three for GCSE maths. Well worthwhile having a go at. Um, it will give you a couple of different skills that do come up in both calculators and non-calculator papers. Okay, so please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions. So the first one is Xavier is making a model car using a scale of one to 20. So what we're saying is, is that every one centimeter on the actual model is equal to 20 20 centimeters in real life. So what we can do is say that if it's 1 to 20, if the length of the model car is actually 8, it's 8 times bigger. So if I multiply this side by 8, I'm going to get 160. Now don't forget that's 160 centimeters. And it does say give your answer in meters. So in meters, that's going to equal 1.6 meters. And that would be the answer to question number 1. Okay, so working pretty much the other way really is the width of the real car is 1.2 so again I'm going to use the same uh, scale but this time it's 1.2 meters now don't forget that needs to be converted to centimeters and what I've done is I've basically uh, multiplied 20 by 6 to get to 120 and therefore I've got to multiply this side by 6 and that would give me my answer as 6 centimeters in width. So with these types of questions you've just got to be very careful with the units but generally speaking they work out fairly well um, and it is a bit of a favorite to change the units on these types of questions. So this is a very typical one where you've got a, um, a scale drawing of a garden. Now uh, Josh is wanting to cover the garden using concrete paving slabs and then it says each slab is 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters but they've given us the scale of one centimeter to two meters. Okay, so probably the easiest thing with this is actually to convert that centimeters to 0.5 meters. Okay, so just be very careful about these sorts of things. So when I actually measure the scale drawing, what I actually get, and um, I do appreciate that printing will vary from printer to printer, but hopefully you'll get the same as me. But I get that um, the actual uh, depth of the garden or the width of the garden is five centimeters. Now if it's five centimeters and it's a scale of one centimeter to two meters, it basically means that that's the same as saying 10 meters. Okay, so hopefully that's okay for you. That's the most important thing to measure this out in meters. So the length of the garden is actually eight centimeters. And if I do the conversion, that's going to mean that it's actually 16 meters for the garden. Okay, so my garden is 10 meters by 16 meters, and I've got these paving slabs that are going to be half a meter by half a meter. So if you can imagine, if I have 16 meters and I want to put paving slabs, slabs along here, each one is half a meter in width, then I'm actually going to need 32 paving slabs along this particular length here. And then I can do the same with the depth of the garden where I've got uh, all of these paving slabs. They are square. I'm sorry about my drawing, but hopefully you'll get the idea that because I've got 10 meters worth and each paving slab is half a meter, I want 20 paving slabs in terms of the depth of the garden. So my total number of slabs is going to be 32 along the bottom, but I've actually got 20 rows. So that's going to be 32 times 20, which is going to give me a grand total of 640 
slabs and that would be the answer to that particular question. Uh, sometimes with these sorts of questions they do ask you to add a price to it and ask whether it's in a budget or something like that. So um, that would be the way I would do it. Just be very very careful about the centimetres to metres. It is very much a favourite uh, favourite way of writing these things. Okay let's move on then to question number three. Please do stop the video and have a go at each of these questions. So a map is a scale factor of 1 to uh, 40,000. The distance between the two points on the map is 6 centimetres and again it's exactly the same as we did before. We've got 1 to 40,000 but don't forget if it's 1 centimetre on the map then it means 40,000 centimetres in real life. So therefore if it's 6 centimetres I've multiplied that by 6 and multiply that side by 6 I'm going to get the grand total of 240,000 centimetres. Now you'll notice it says give the answer in kilometres so that's what I need to do now. I need to then Divide through by 100 would give me 2,400 metres. And then divide through by 1,000 will give me 2.4 kilometres. So I suggest that you kind of work it like that, really. That uh, to go from centimetres to metres, what you're going to do is divide by 100, because there are 100 centimetres in a metre. And then to go from metres to kilometres, you're going to divide divide through by a thousand because there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. Okay, so let's look at number four. Now this might be a little bit tricky on this particular screen. I'll do my best for you. So it says the accurate uh, scale drawing shows a lighthouse and a small boat. The small boat has a real height of six centimeters. Okay, well if it's got a real height of uh, sorry, big pardon, six metres, find an estimate for the real height of the lighthouse. So what we're basically saying is if we look at the small boat here, in real life it's got a height of six metres. Um, however, so that's, that's just at the bottom there, six metres. Okay, so however, um, in terms of the actual drawing, it's actually 1.5 centimetres. So if we say that the small boat equals 1.5 centimeters which equals 6 meters. Okay, so therefore one centimetre of height is going to equal to 6 divided by 1.5 which is going to equal 4 metres. Okay, so hopefully that's okay for you. I'm looking at finding a way to figure out how tall the lighthouse is. Um, what I need to know is how many metres it is per centimetre. And then when I work out the length of the actual, or the, the height of the actual lighthouse, that's actually now 11 centimetres. So the lighthouse equals 11 centimetres, and I know per centimetre it's going to be 4 metres, so therefore 44 metres height, which is the answer to this particular question. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. I'm sorry it didn't come across particularly well on the screen with the uh, with the picture of the lighthouse, but if you do print off the worksheet, hopefully it'll come across a little bit better for you. Okay, so let's move on then to question number five. We're very roughly halfway through this particular worksheet. Uh, they do get a little bit trickier towards the end, but not too bad really. So a model ship has a length of 15 centimeters centimeters and then we're using a scale of 1 to 450. Okay, and we're being asked to work out length of the real ship giving the answer in meters. So it's a very similar sort of thing that we did before. So if we have a look at that, I've got um, 1 to 450 is my scale. It's actually 15 centimeters model, so I've multiplied that by 15. I need to multiply this side by 15, and that's going to give me 6750. And don't forget that centimeters. Now I need to then change that to meters in order to answer the question, which is dividing through by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter, so it's actually going to give me. 67.5 meters for the length of that particular ship. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Okay, so on to question number six. So this is one where we've got uh, a map. Map drawings is very popular, these sorts of 
questions. So the map is drawn to a scale of 1 to 500,000. So basically, when we measure on the map the actual distance in, say, centimetres, that will be equivalent to the same centimetres when we actually have real life. However, it is asking us to give the answer in kilometres, so we need to do that translation. OK, so um, John is driving from Simon's Town to Deacon's Hill. OK, and it says, how far is the real distance? Well, if we measure it on um, your map, you should get a distance of 3.5 centimetres. OK, so if the map distance is 3.5, then we need to use the scale factor to change that to the amount of centimetres that are actually on the ground. So therefore it's 1 to 500,000. I've multiplied that by 3.5, so therefore I'm going to multiply this by 3.5, and that's going to give me 3.5 is equivalent to 1, 7, 5, and then 4 zeros afterwards. So it's 1, 0.75 million centimetres. Okay, so um, that therefore needs to be changed then to kilometres. So there are a hundred centimetres and a metre. So if I divide by a hundred by moving the decimal point, that's going to give me 17,000. 500 meters and then it asks for the answer to be given in kilometers so I'm going to divide by a thousand move the decimal point three places and that's going to give me 17.5 kilometers which is the answer to part A. Okay then it says in part B calculate the total distance that John drives. Well he's going to go from Simon's Town to Deacon's Hill and then from Deacon's Hill through to Carry Beck. Okay so from Deacon Hill to Carry Beck it is actually an additional distance on the map of three centimetres. So we've already got the first part of the journey. The second part of the journey is going to be Deacon Hill to carry back. We need to work that one out. So just for the purposes of the video, um, if I uh, just write on here that um, Simon's Town to Deacon Hill is going to be, as we've already worked out, 17.5 kilometres. But the final one is going to be Deacon's Hill, and that's going to be to carry back. OK, so on the map itself, it's actually three centimetres, so I just need to work that out. So I've got uh, one, two, 500,000 and again don't forget that this is going to give us our distance in centimeters which is 1 5 and then I've got 0 0 0 0 0 centimeters okay so I want to convert that through to meters and then kilometers so if I divide by a hundred that's going to give me 1 5 0 0 0 uh, meters and then I'm going to divide by a thousand and that's going to give me um, 15 kilometers so fairly straightforward from Deacon's Hill to carry back it's going to be 15 kilometers okay so if I now add those two together what I'm going to get is an overall journey distance of 32.5 kilometers and that would be the answer to part B which is the end of question number six okay so we're on to the final page then which is question number seven and number eight now these are drawing ones or rather one is drawing one is measuring so uh, hopefully it'll be okay for you and I'll do my best to use the tools I've got available to me on this uh, on this uh, screen so Draw a scale drawing of a room 4 metre by 2 metre using a scale of 0.1 centimetres to 0.5 metres. OK, so I'm just going to work that out, actually, that if it's 1 centimetre to half a metre, it's going to be that I need to draw this as 8 centimetres multiplied by 4 centimetres. Pretty much that's it really, so I'll have a go at uh, using my ruler here to draw this. Okay, so I've got my line here which is going to be 8 centimetres along. Let's just give myself a bit of space here. That's going to be 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters along. Um, and then it's going to be four centimeters in depth. OK, so that's going to be just a little bit move a little bit there. OK, this is probably not the most elegant way of doing a video, but, you know, uh, one, two, three, four. OK, and then basically I need to join those up. So I'm going to put this along at the end here. OK, and that's going to be one, two, three, four. OK, and then I just need to join this up at the bottom here, which is going to be this line along here. And that would be my particular room. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you. OK, let's get rid of that ruler. Um, the only thing I would say with this is that it's sometimes nice, it's just neat to actually write the scale as one centimeter to 0.5 meters. And then if you wanted to call it the room, that would be perfectly fine. Okay, so hopefully that's all right for you. The last question on this particular worksheet is calculating the real perimeter of the shape, giving your answer in meters. Well, we've got a scale of two centimeters to five meters. So all I would do is just measure these edges. And if I measure them, I should get this long one as five centimeters. Uh, then I got 2.5, uh, 2.5. OK, this is also 2.5. So 2.5 plus 2.5 is five. And then I'm going to take that away from nine centimeters, which is the bottom here. OK, so I know that this one here is going to be four. OK, 2.5 again, just a little bit of measuring these sorts of things, 5. And as you know, all we're looking for for the total perimeter is the outside edge. So if I just write that as, um, if I write it in here, the total. OK, now I'll try to write it all out in centimetres. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start from this point here. So just start from the top left hand side and then I'm going to say, well, that's the same as saying 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 4 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5. OK, and when I add all of that together, I'm going to get 33 centimetres. Now, don't forget, we need to use the scale. And what we're told is that every two centimetres, um, that's equivalent to five uh, metres. So if I want to find out how many centimeters or how many meters there are all together I'm going to use the scale of 2 to 5 but actually it's going to be 33 so in other words what I've done is I've multiplied that by 16.5 and I need to multiply this side by 16.5 and that's going to give me a meterage of 82.5 meters so it's exactly the same principle that we've been doing before is we're just multiplying both sides of the scale factor and that would be worth three marks to you okay so i hope that particular worksheet was useful please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything i'll always come back to you subscribe to the channel like the video share and anything else. And I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Next one. Yes, that's all right.